Family Theater presents Marion and Jim Jordan with Stephen McNally as your host. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network in cooperation with Family Theater presents Jeannie with the Light Green Hair. To star in this show will be Marion and Jim Jordan, better known to you as Fibra McGee and Molly. And now, here is your host, Stephen McNally. Thank you, Tony Lafrano. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family Theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our transcribed drama, Jeannie with the Light Green Hair, starring Marion Jordan as Agnes, and Jim Jordan as Wallace. Well, here we are, kiddo, at last. Kind of hard to believe we finally made it, huh? <laughs> oh, I should say it is. We've planned this trip for so long, Wallace. Yep. Oh, I'm so excited. Imagine us, Mr. and Mrs. Wallace Morton, in Cairo. Cairo, Egypt. Oh, I just want to see everything, dearie. The Sphinx and the pyramids and the bazaars. Well, and... let's get going, then. We won't see anything standing here, Aggie. Well, which way do we go? Where do we start? We're only a block from the hotel and I'm lost already. I got it all figured out. There's only one thing to do. Find ourselves a tourist agency and have them take us around. Show us everything. That's a good idea. Let me see now. There ought to be a sign along this street someplace. Oh, there's a lot of signs, but who can read them? I never saw such a scrambled up bunch of curly cues and dots and stuff in my life. Oh, well, that's merely because you don't understand Egyptian, my dear. Now you take that sign on that shop right down there, you see? Yes. Yeah. That sign in the original Egyptian says, Guide Service. Tourists took places reasonable. You name it, we'll find it. How'd you figure that out? <laughs> By them maps in the window and that snapshot of the pyramids with all the banana peelings and empty root beer cans scattered around it. <laughs> Obviously, this guy deals with tourists. Oh, you're just amazing. Ah, uh, yep. Does the sign say by any chance whether the man speaks English or not? What if he don't? I can read lips. How was that again? Let's go in and find out. Holy smoke, get a load of this guy. Fez, hookah pipe, beard, the works. Yeah, I'm afraid we made a mistake coming in here. Let's go, he scares me. Hi, you folks, can I help you? What on earth are you doing in Egypt, sir? Yeah, what's the scoop, bud? You over here looking for ball players or something? <laughs> Nothing like that. It all happened a couple of years ago back home, see? I'm listening to that song one time. You know the one? See the pyramids along the... Uh, and I, you know, it kind of got to me here, you know? I always wanted to see the oil, and that's it in a nutshell, man. Well, anyway, as long as we're here, bud, we want to get took around. Every place. Can you tour us? <laughs> you have come to the right guy, Mac. What you want to see? Oh, we want to see just everything interesting, sir. Yeah, like, for instance, some of them old harems that I read about in the Arabian Nights. That might be interesting. Wallace, we are not visiting any harems. Skip the harems, bud. Yeah. Uh, what we're interested in, sir, are the more aesthetic things, the educational things. Yeah, educational. So if you got any nightclubs on your list, bud, I understand it's very educational to watch them dancing girls. Wallace, what we want to see, sir, is the Sphinx and the pyramids and some of the old tombs. Uh -uh, say no more, lady. I know your type very well. Got just the tour for you. Oh, good. I wonder, see, do you suppose we could actually go inside of one of the old tombs? I'd just love to see one. Hey, now, wait a minute, kiddo. Halloween's gone and passed. Let's not... Uh, uh, lady, you are in luck. Not ten minutes ago, I just got official permission to take people out to a new dig, a tomb that's just been opened, see? The science guys are still digging out and around it, as a matter of fact, so yous are really going to be in on the ground floor. Oh, wonderful. When can we leave? First thing in the morning. I'll have the bus pick yous up at the hotel, and yous can ride out to the site with a whole group, oh, see? Oh, good. Isn't that wonderful, Wallace? Yeah, yeah, tomorrow. Well, don't fail us, bud. I'd hate to miss the tour through that dirty old tomb. Ah, uh, dead rat it anyhow. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if I may have your attention for a moment before we enter the tomb, I should like to caution you to stay together in a group behind me. 
As you know, this particular tomb was just opened the other day, and there are still certain passageways that we have not fully explored as yet. So if you will all stay close behind me, please, let's go. Oh, my, isn't it thrilling, Wallace? Yeah, dark, too. Notice how musty the air is in here? What a peculiar odor it has. Yeah, smells like Kelly's pool hall on Sunday morning. Here, ladies and gentlemen, is the first object we found upon entering the tomb. This ancient vase you see sitting along the wall here. From preliminary examination, we judge it to be at least 4,000 years old. Imagine! Oh, how I'd love to have something like that to take back home with me. I might keep my pipe tobacco in it. wonder how deep it is. I'll stick my hand inside the thing. Uh, kindly refrain from handling any of the objects. Huh? They're all quite ancient, you know. Oh, I'm sorry, bud. Now, if you'll all just step this way, we'll explore the main burial chamber. Wallace, put that vase down and come on. My hand's stuck in the dead rather thing. You go on, I'll get it off in a minute and catch up with you. Well, all right, but hurry now. Oh, it's a gone vase is stuck tighter than... Ah, there she is. Off. <laughs> oh, glad to get my hand out of... Hmm, what's that? Something inside it. I don't know what the heck it is. Oh, <laughs> it's a ring. Oh, funny looking thing. Looks like it might be gold, though. I'll just slip it on my finger and give it to that guide fella. I better catch up with him, too. On the double. The guy ever got lost in this place. Dead rat, the dead rat. This isn't a fine kettle of mackerel. Wallace, boy, you're lost. Hey! Anybody! Hey! Hey! Nothing. That ring is digging into my hand. Better get it off and for Pete's sake, it won't come over my knuckle. Maybe if I gave it a twist. You summon, master. Oh. I am yours to command. Huh? What? Hey, who are you? I am your slave. Slave, don't give me that. Abe Lincoln cut that stuff out years ago. A Lincoln? Do you mean, master, that you wish for a Lincoln? What are you talking about? Wish for a Lincoln. All I want to do is... It shall be as you wish, master. Now, look, bud, if you'll just... just... Where'd he go? Uh, hey! Hey! Here you are, Master. Mm. I hope it is to your liking. Huh? Behind you. Your Lincoln. My what? Hey, how'd that car get inside this tomb? You wished for it, Master. I didn't do no such a thing. You said Lincoln. I did not. And besides, that's a Pontiac. It is? Oh, dear, I've done it again. Done what again? I must confess, Master, I am rather forgetful. When I stepped out to fulfill your wish, I must have forgotten what you specified for the moment. Look, friend, I'm scared you've flipped your wig somewhere along the line. Now get that car out of my way. As you desire, Master. I gotta get new glasses, that's all. A minute ago, I'd have sworn there was a car. Will there be anything else, Master? No, just let me alone and... Ha Say... You don't happen to know a way out of here, do you? Oh, but of course. I've lived here for 4,000 years. I know every corner. Well, who are you, anyway? I am the genie of the ring. Uh, the, uh, huh? the ring you wear on your hand, Master. Whenever you need me, just twist the ring, and I am yours to command. You have merely to wish, and I shall fulfill that wish. Well, I'll be darned. And you've been doing this for 4,000 years? You must be getting pretty tired by now. Believe me, Master, I am poop. Well, why don't you relax, then? Take yourself a vacation. Alas, I cannot. Until I am released from the curse that binds me to the ring, I cannot escape my fate. Gee, that's tough. Well, how do you go about getting released from this curse, anyway? I've forgotten that, too. Mm. It's been so long, and as I told you, I'm quite forgetful. So I guess I shall just have to go on forever granting wishes for whoever wears the ring. Oh, well, my gosh, friend, I'd like to help you, but... Oh, that's all right. I hate it, but I'm rather used to it by now. Would you care to make any further wishes at this time, Master? No, no, I guess not. Take five, kid. Uh, hey, wait a minute. There is something else. I want to get out of this place. Very well. By which door would you care to exit? Which door? Well, well, the one I came in by. On the north side. Yeah, I wish I were back outside at the north entrance. <laughs> yes, sir, you got to give them genies credit. They sure know their stuff. Sure good to be outside again. I wonder where Agnes and the rest of the crowd is. They've been in there two hours at least. Well, I'm not going to sit out here in the sun all day and just twiddle my... Uh-oh. Wallace! 
Wallace! Wallace, are you all right? Oh, Wallace, we've been nearly frantic. We thought you'd been lost in the tomb. We were going back into town to organize a search party to find you. Find me? Well, I've been sitting out here waiting for you to come out for two hours. Two hours? But why didn't you wait by the entrance we went in? On the north side. This is the north side, kiddo. I beg your pardon, Wallace, but this is the south side. Uh -oh. Just ask the bus driver. Oh, how do you like that absent-minded genie? He got things wrong again. What? Uh, never mind. Yeah, you'd never believe me anyhow. Well, come on, they're waiting for us. Just one small minute, young man. What? What was that about Jeannie? Oh, uh, th that's a fellow I met inside. Nice enough chap. He he's got green hair, though. Now you're just overtired, dearie. Huh? Jeannie had light brown hair. Uh, yeah, but I... But, 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 oh, skip it. Wallace Morton, I demand to know where you're taking me. Just unlax, kiddo, relax. You'll see, you'll see. I declare, ever since we visited that old tomb day before yesterday, you've been as full of mystery as a bowl of chop suey. I just can't figure you out. Now, Wallace, I absolutely demand to know what's going on here. <laughs> you'll see, kiddo, you'll see. That's why I'm taking you out to that old tomb again. The tomb? Heavenly days, why? We went through the place the other day. Well, what I've got to tell you isn't going to be easy, Agnes. And I figured if we went back to that spooky setting, you might be more inclined to believe me when I tell you about the genie. Well, now you have aroused my curiosity. Now, let's see now. That car ought to be along here someplace. Oh, did you rent a car for us to use? Huh? Uh, yeah, sort of. Dad read where you suppose he put it. That's it, over there. But I thought I wished for a Cadillac. I know. I boo-booed again. Oh. You'll have to use the Ford. Sorry. Who are you talking to? You, you didn't see anyone here just now? Well, no. Why? Oh, oh nothing. I, I was just thinking out loud again. Oh, here's the car. Let's go. You're awful quiet all of a sudden, kiddo. Well, I've just been trying to figure this thing out on my own. Back there in town, you said we were going out to the tomb. So I might be more inclined to believe you when you told me about the genie. Could you mean genie like G-E-N-I-E? -E? Could be, could be. But you just wait. You'll see. But Wallace, surely don't expect me to believe that you actually saw a genie. Genies are something you only read about in fairy tales. Well, all I can say is... Oh, of all the luck. A flat. Ah, and us miles from nowhere. Are you sure you took the right road out of town? Yes, I'm sure. Or at least I think I'm sure. Oh, fine. Well, we'll worry about that later. I've got to fix that dad ratted flat now. Can I help you? No, thanks. You just sit here and relax. I'll have it changed in a jiffy. Oh, well, I'll be... No tools. Now, if this isn't a fine kettle... Hey, wait a minute. What am I worrying about? I'll just twist the ring and... You summon me, master? I am yours to command. Look, genie, old kid, I need some... Hey, you're not my genie. Where's the other guy? He stepped out to lunch, so he sent me instead. He... Well, all right. I guess you'll have to do. Look, bud, I need a wrench. Can you fix me up? But of course. You have merely to make a wish. Okay. I wish for one medium-sized wrench. So shall it be. Command me, O oh Lord and Master. Hey, where did you come from? Oh, I get it. <laughs> Pretty fancy way to deliver tools, though. But I have no tools. Won't I do just as I am? Oh, for Pete's sake. Let me twist that ring again. Yes, what is it this time, little man? Oh, you're back. Well, good. Look, what's the idea of sending this girl? I ordered a wrench to... Wrench? My goodness, he thought you said wench. Well, I didn't. Now get out of here, both of you, before my wife sees this gal and I'm really in trouble. Well, I can take a hint. And take this girl with you. Oh, fine. Now he's gone and left you here. Go on, sis. Blow. Ham scray. Shush. But I can't leave unless the genie wills it. Well, I'll fix that. I'll get him back here and... Wallace, what are you doing back there? Who are you talking to? Oh, nothing. No, no one, kiddo. I'll be right with you. I distinctly heard you speaking to someone. I'm coming back to see what's going on. Uh, no, don't. Uh, uh, that is... Uh, come on, sis. Climb into the car trunk. Quick. But why? Are you kidding? You want to see my rich young blood spilled all over this desert? Get in there, quick. Good heavens, Wallace. You haven't even begun to fix the tire yet. 
What have you been doing back here all this Good. time? Well, uh, you see, Agnes, uh, I had a little trouble locating some tire tools. <laughs> what was that? Um, I didn't hear anything. <laughs> mm. Why, that sounds like it's coming from the trunk of the car. Open it up. No, here, I'll open it. Uh... Why, Wallace, it's a girl. A girl. What is she doing in there? Well, you, you see, well, well, it's a kind of a long story. In, in the first place, this here genie... Oh, so this is your genie. Oh, Wallace, how could you? After all these years, 30 years of married life, and not, I never want to see you again. Uh, hey, wait a minute. You got things all wrong. Hey, where are you going? I'm going back to the hotel if you care. But you can't walk. Oh, can't I? But that's the wrong direction anyway. Hey, kiddo, wait. Don't you kiddo me, you Casanova in sheep's clothing. Oh, but Agnes, Agnes! Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I think she's angry with you, Master. You're doggone right she's mad, but I don't see anything funny about it. There's no need to worry, and she'll get over it. I'm a woman. I know. In the meanwhile, you have me to keep you company. I don't want company. I want my wife. Go on, beat it now, will you? But I told you I can't leave until the genie wills it. Well, we'll get this thing straightened out right now. I'll twist the ring and... What again? Goodness, you'd think this is all I have to do. What else have you got to do? Well, now that you mention it, nothing. Well. But I was hoping I could get out to see a movie. Oh, why did I have to be a genie anyway? Why couldn't I have been born in a jar of alcohol or something? Ah, uh, cut out your beefing. Very well. What is it this time? Well, first of all, get rid of this female genie here. Things were going along fine till she showed up. Now my wife is leaving me and she's sore and... Oh, how am I ever going to square myself? All right, Nodger, you may go. As you will it. I'm sorry I failed. Hey, don't worry about it, baby. I tell you what, you run along and see if you can get two in the mezzanine and we'll take in a movie together. I'll be waiting. <laughs> well, at least this trip isn't a complete bust. Nadja loves popcorn, too. Oh, hey, now, uh, what else can I do for you? Well, I've still got this flat tire to worry about, so if you just take care of that, I'll try and catch up with the missus and tut, see if I can... Tut, little man, I'm way ahead of you. It's already fixed, see? It's... Say, what do you know about that? <laughs> well, thanks, genie old kid. I'll do something big for you someday. I doubt that, but thanks anyway. Will there be anything else? Uh, no, that's all for now. Go on, catch your movie. Phew, at last. Back where I started, except that now I'll never be able to explain this. All the dead, ratted messes. Next time a travel agent talks me into a tour of an Egyptian tomb, I hope someone kicks me right where I... Ouch! Hey, I thought you'd gone to the movies. <laughs> Why, Mrs. Morton, what are you doing out here at the tomb again? Uh, no tours today, you know. Or is your husband lost again? Why, heavenly days, I thought I was headed for town. But you're all alone and walking. I don't understand. It's a long story, and I'm too tired to go into it now. <sighs> May I sit down and rest for a few minutes in the shade of the doorway? Why, yes, of course. You did arrive at a rather inopportune time, however. I was just uh, uh, taking an inventory of the relics we found in the tomb. Oh, yeah, so I see. My, some of them are beautiful, aren't they? Yes, indeed. And priceless. Worth a fortune. I should imagine. I see you're packing them. For safekeeping, I guess? Uh, yes, yes. I would think that the uh, museum would have sent wooden crates for them, though. Such delicate objects. Pardon? I was just remarking that it seemed odd to me that you should be packing such rare articles in a common suitcase. Of course, I don't know much about such things. I'm afraid you know more than you should, Mrs. Morton. Well, I do know there's all kinds of ways of packing things. Now, if you were to take a bit of sawdust and pack it lightly around this little gold scepter, it wouldn't scratch, you see. My, wrapped in that shirt the way you have it, why... <laughs> It almost looks as if you're leaving the country. Oh, you needn't pretend innocence, Mrs. Morton. I am fully aware that you've discovered my little plan. Plan? You mean that you really are? And no one is going to stop me. No one, Mrs. Morton. Oh, dear. There isn't a soul around for miles. There are no tours today. There's no one here but you and I, Mrs. Morton. Just you and I. Well, in that case, I'll just march right back into town and report you to the authorities, young man. The very idea! I think not, Mrs. Morton. You see what I have here? Oh, a knife. Thousands of years old, but still quite serviceable. But surely you wouldn't... No, I wouldn't, if you do as I say. What are you going to do? Oh, you needn't be frightened, my dear. I'm merely going to escort you into the tomb and let you find your way out alone. 
But by that time, I'll be miles away and quite safe with my treasure. Uh, come along, Mrs. Morton. This way. Yes, sir, Wallace, old boy. You must be part bloodhound. The way you follow them footsteps in the sand is positively amazing. Well. How do you like that? She's hoofed it all the way out to this old tomb again. I told her she was taking the wrong road. Leave it to a woman to get her directions all balled up. Well, as long as we were headed here in the first place, maybe it's just as well. Wonder where she... Hey, Agnes! Hey, kiddo! It's me! Don't suppose she went inside that spooky joint by herself. Uh-oh, she's here all right. Here's her purse by the doorway. Well, here goes nothing. Lost again, Mr. Morton? Huh? Oh, oh, it's you. Boy, am I glad you showed up, bud. Have you seen my wife in here? Why, yes. As a matter of fact, I have. She's just ahead there a few yards. Oh, thank goodness. I was afraid I'd get lost in here again. Oh, you'll find her all right. Just turn left at the next corridor, take another left, then a third. After that, make three right turns, and there she is. But I thought you said she was just ahead. Look, bud, I'll get lost sure as shooting if I start wandering around in here again. Couldn't you sort of lead the way? Oh, sorry, but I'm in rather a hurry. You just... Mr. Morton, that ring. Where did you get that ring? Oh, that. Yeah, I, w I was going to give it back the first chance I got. Well, this is an excellent opportunity, then. It's solid gold, you know, and quite valuable. Yeah, like I said, I was going to give it back, but I've got kind of attached to the thing now. How's about buying it, bud? It's not for sale, sir. Now, now give it to hey, me. Hey, take it easy. Take it easy. You're pulling my finger off. Hey, watch it. you got to twist it to get it off. See? Well, Killjoy, what now? What? Great Scott, what's that? Just a minute now. Who twisted the ring? He did. He, he, he did? Oh, dear, now this is a dilemma. Who do I belong to? He twisted the ring, you're still wearing it. Oh, dear, what do I do now? Just relax, kiddo. I've got the ring, so that makes me still the Grand Mogul or something. Yes, I suppose. But I do wish you wouldn't try to confuse me, so goodness, a genie's life is hard enough without this. I must be losing my mind. This isn't happening. It can't be happening. I've been here too long. I've been working too hard. No, I'll give the stuff all back. I didn't mean to take it. Really, I didn't. I'll leave. I'll go away. I'll never have another dishonest thought as long as I live. I'll give it all back. I'll give it all back. Well, I'll be a nunky's muckle. What do you suppose got into him? Well, I guess he's never seen a genie before. Goodness, am I that bad? No, I, I think you're kind of cute. You're sweet. Now look, kiddo, there's one more thing I'd like for you to do for me. Yeah, I think you're cute, too. Oh, now cut that stuff out. Yeah. Look, that guy went and got Agnes lost in here somewhere, and I'll never be able to find her alone. You suppose you Well, of course, it's done. Already? You'll find her waiting by the car. Oh, thanks, Jeannie. You've been a brick through this whole ugly mess. I wish I could do something for you. You know, I wish I could release you from this curse that is holding you to that ring. That's it. That's it. I'm free. Huh? Yes, you've done it. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. At last I've found an unselfish man. Oh, shucks, it was accidental. I mean, I, mean, I was glad to do it. Tell me, what are you going to do now with nothing to do with your time? Are you kidding? I'm going to see that movie all the way through. Oh, it'll be good to get home again, won't it, dearie? It sure will. Like the poet says, be it ever so humble, there's no place, etc., etc., etc. There's only one thing wrong with this whole trip, though, Aggie. What's that? When we get home and I try to tell the guys at the Elks Club about this, they're not going to believe a word I say. That brings me to a point, Wallace. Mm -hmm. This time, let's just have the facts. Shall we, the true facts? Doggone it, Agnes, I'm trying to give you the true facts. Oh. What happened was, when I twisted the ring, this genie come right up out of the floor with green hair, see? And when I says Lincoln took care of the slaves, he brought me a Pontiac right there in the tomb. And then today, when the tire went flat, and I says, get me a wrench, he thought I says wrench, and that's how come... Wallace! Huh? Come on, let's get dressed for dinner. This is just ridiculous. This is Stephen McNally again. You've uh, probably heard this statement. 
God endows each of his creatures according to its needs. Isn't it interesting, then, that of all the animate beings in the world, man alone has a mind capable of speculating on the future, of thinking beyond immediate needs and desires and building toward distant goals. Millions of words have been written about this human characteristic, and hundreds of reasons have been given for it since mankind first started wondering about this strange gift. Actually, most of the answers boil down to just one word, survival. Not of the body alone. The animals have managed to survive without the ability to think. But survival of the soul. The needs of man are greater than those of the animals because to man, survival means more than just keeping the body alive. It means a continuing, after physical death, as a personality, with God, with him for eternity. And in the words of St. Paul, I has not seen nor ear heard of the wonders God has prepared for those who love him. As a means of assuring ourselves of survival, of keeping close to God, Family Theater recommends family prayer. For prayer is man's way of talking to God. And family prayer is beneficial for still another reason. The family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. Hollywood Family Theater has brought you transcribed Jeannie with the Light Green Hair, starring Marion and Jim Jordan. Stephen McNally was your host. Others in the cast were Frank Nelson, Tony Barrett, Barbara Eiler, and Robert Emlin. The script was written for Family Theater by William Lutz and directed by Robert Hugh O'Sullivan with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program by the Mutual Network, which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lofrano expressing the wish of family theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to join us next week when family theater will present Family Theater's 10th anniversary and our special birthday program, the Treasury of Homes will star Loretta Young, John Charles Thomas, Vic Damone, and Marina Koshetz. Join us, won't you? <laughs> Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is Mutual, the radio network for all America. Music